Welcome to lecture 13. We have learned how to talk about a robot and talk about how if we move each of the motors, how fast does the end effector move? When we say the end effector, we're talking about this ON frame, which has origin ON and it's got rotation of RN all in frame zero. And we can talk about its linear and its angular velocity. But what happens when we, you know, we go to the store and we buy some sort of end effector? Something that we bolt onto the end of the robot. This is an example of a welder tip. And that tip is no longer at the end effector. There's an offset there. How can we talk about how fast that end effector, the tip of my end effector, is moving? What we want to know is how do we represent the tool velocity, which is shown with these blue arrows. Now, just a reminder, we have an exam coming up. In order to be a good introduction to robotics, roboticist, you need to understand all the concepts on this page. Quiz yourself, you know, ask yourself, can I define the image of a matrix? You can say that out loud to yourself, and you can do that for each of these. You're probably okay for these. If you can't, good thing to review. The tool velocity. In here, I have drawn a couple things that you need to know. We know T6 in frame zero. This is, we know the psi six in frame six. This is, how fast my angular velocity of my tool. And this right here is um, the, the pose and the rotation matrix. What we really want to know is what, how fast is the tool moving? When you talk about T of the tool in frame six, what we're really saying is we want to know this matrix where we've got a rotation matrix. Sorry about these. We want to know its new rotation and its uh, D offset. And you know the bottom row, this is a homogeneous transform, so it's going to be 0, 0, 0, 1. We want to know what that is. And so this R here is really, well, we can grab it from this T matrix. We know that this is R tool in frame 6, and that this is D tool in frame 6. Now, we want to know, well, what is this R dot? Well, the derivative of this, since you know there's no rotation directly about this axis, there is going to be no rotation here. This is going to be a three by three zero make. See that, look at this, this picture here. We are doing an instantaneous revolution around this axis. We are doing no instantaneous re revolution around this axis. That's intriguing. So our goal is to be able to figure out what is this T tool in frame six. We need to know what is R, what is D. Well, we know that this is zero, 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 and this is one. This is Greek letter psi of tool in frame tool. Well, that is going to be the Jacobian of tool in frame tool as a function of the configuration Q multiplied by Q dot. We're going to have to decompose this and take it step by step. So let's start with, well, what is our tool in frame zero? Well, that tool frame is going to be, we can do a two-step revolution. We know the last revolution is R and we've got a revolution to get there is um, in frame six to zero. And so we've got this whole step here. If we take the derivative of this, well, this first term is gonna have a derivative. We normally have to do the product rule, but we said that this last R has, you know, has no time derivative. And so it's just going to be R dot of six in frame zero times R L plus zero. And so we know that any revolution, any of the derivative in your rotation matrix is just a, a skew symmetric. And so we know that this is going to be the original skew symmetric of omega tool in frame zero times r tool in frame zero. This is going to be s of omega six in frame zero times r six in frame zero times r. The next simplification, we know that r six in frame zero times r, well, that's going to be our tool in frame zero. So this is x omega six in frame zero times our tool in frame zero. And boom, we can see something. You know, the only difference in these two equations is um, this axis that they're rotating around. This is rotating s omega six zero. We can get this by multiplying this by the transpose of our tool in frame zero. We get that the skew symmetric around omega tool in frame zero is equal to omega six in frame zero. Well, that means that these axes that we're rotating around are exactly the same. Whoa. And so
omega tool in frame tool is equal to omega six in frame tool. And remember, we can apply these rotation matrices. So that is R six in frame tool times omega six in frame six. This R six in frame tool, well, that's just the inverse of this R that we defined at the very beginning. The tool in frame zero is gonna be our V six, our original velocity plus your angular velocity around that rotation that our inner factor is doing plus this R vector, which is gonna be the distance tool in the tool frame is just going to be v6 in the tool frame plus omega 6 in the tool frame cross r in the tool frame. All we're doing is we're changing the, the frame that these are in. It's a free vector. We're allowed to do that. This means that v6 in the tool frame is equal to just our rotation matrix rt v6 in frame 6. And so now the next thing that we need to know is what is this R tool? Well, this R tool is just that D offset uh, that we had previously, um, but we've got to rotate the frame that it's in. So it's RT times D, which means that our omega six in the tool frame cross R tool in the tool frame is just a rotation RT times omega six in the six cross product with RT in frame D. Remember, we can switch the order of a cross product by taking the negation of the second one. So let's do that. Negative RTD cross RT omega 6 in 6. This cross product, remember the cross product generalizes the skew symmetric. So it's going to be negative S of RTD times R transpose omega 6 in 6. We want to do a similarity transform. We're going to have to pull out an R. We want to multiply this by an RT. That will give us an R on the outside. So we are similarly transposed. We're still going to have S of D in the side. Um, and we pull out our R transpose here. And our R times our original R transpose omega 6 in frame 6. These two terms cancel each other out. We've got minus RT S of D times omega six in frame six, that which was desired. And so let's go back to the terms that we're looking for. V tool in frame tool. Uh, we need to write down what is V six in frame tool. RT V six and six minus, so over here we had our term that we wanted, omega six and tool cross R tool. We can translate that into RTS of D omega 6 and 6. And then our omega tool and frame tool, uh, we also have that as our transpose omega 6 frame tool. And so finally, we need we have our conversion now. And what is our, our psi, uh, our linear velocity and linear angular velocity in frame 6? Convert that into tool frame. Uh, we can take all these terms here. Uh, we've got our V66 here, going to be first column here, R transpose times our omega 66 here. We're going to have a minus RT S of D. And then to get our, o, our omega tool and tool, uh, we just need to multiply an R transpose over here. So we just got the zero matrix there. And we have our conversion now. Uh, from the things we know, the velocity of the tool, of the ineffector in the ineffective frame, now we have the velocity of the tool in the tool frame. Done. And we'd like to be able to invert that. So we'd like to invert this relationship. So what is psi 6 in frame 6? It's going to be some matrix times psi tool and psi tool. Fortunately, this is a a diagonal matrix. So again, to take, you'll find the inverse of the R, which is going to be R. The inverse of this R is just going to be R. But our inverse of a matrix will be the, the negation of this. So S of D times R transpose. A zero vector there. So now we can transform between these rigidly attached moving frames. And so in general, if you have a psi a in frame A, and you want to get from some psi B in frame B, uh, you're going to have a zero, that's three by three down here. You'll have RB in frame A, 
R, B in frame A, and then we've got to account for the linear velocity. So this will be S of D of B in frame A times R of B in frame A. So why does this matter? We need to know about the tool velocity because we're going to bolt on some fancy ineffector. Often these ineffectors are machines in themselves. I'm getting a lot of things from Ming3D.com. He has a nice article on uh, ineffectors. If you ever get a chance, tour a robot factory and see all the ineffector tooling that's bolted on the end of the robot. Here we've got that welding robot where this there's an offset. They're not even aligned in here. Often people will affix a milling, uh, some sort of spindle tool on the end of the robot. It sort of is a way to turn your expensive robot into a CNC mill, generally not as accurate. Uh, in this case, the z-axis is pointing to the left of the page, and then our tool, the spinning part of the tool, is usually we call that the z-axis. So we've got this transformation between the, the two. But there is no variable there. Uh, there is no prismatic or revolute joint between those two. There's no motion there and so we can just use this psi transfer to figure out our velocity of our ineffector. Similar thing here's a spot welder that adds this extension to the, the robot. So now it's time for our next section which is the analytical Jacobian. And the question we pose is what if you wanted to specify the ineffector as some sort of ZYZ Euler angle triple. So you want to specify this as a rotation around some vector of Euler angles. We want to talk about the velocity. And so we'll, we'll couple these together and we'll make this vector alpha is equal to, if I go this, triple phi theta psi. So we know that our, our Jacobian is going to be rz around phi, our y around theta, rz around phi. Uh, the derivative of this is just going to be Q symmetric times that matrix R. Uh, if you uh, multiply this out, the axis that we're revolving around is just going to be C psi uh, as sine theta times your phi dot minus sine of phi times theta dot for the x component. The y component is sine of phi times sine of theta times uh, phi dot plus cosine of psi times theta dot that's psi dot plus cosine theta times phi dot. Now, this is a linear input of this uh, rotation vector that we're rotating. We can pull that out, and we know that phi... Actually, I'm going to pause this video now, and I want you to solve this out. Write uh, this as a 3x3 three three matrix, a linear matrix, times um, these vectors. I'll give you some time to do that. Hooray! You paused the video, and you did it. Uh, let's let's work this out. So we've got phi times c psi sine theta. We've got theta dot times theta dot is minus sine of phi. We've got nothing times psi dot. This next term we've got sine of phi times sine of theta. We've got sine of phi. We've got zero. Um, and then here we've got sine of theta, 0, 1. And so if we look at this, this is some matrix B of alpha. Alpha is our current um, psi theta phi times alpha dot. That gives us our omega. Now psi, we're going to define this vector psi as a change in our d dot and a change in our alpha dot. And that will give us what's called the analytical Jacobian, j of alpha times q, q dot, that is equal to some sigma. The sigma is going to be just our v and omega. We know what this is. This is going to give us a psi, which is equal to our v and omega, our linear and our angular velocity. So what is this equal to? Well, what our v dot, that is going to be just our change in our d vector. And our omega is going to equal to, we have that from up above, a j of q, q dot is equal to psi which is our v and our omega. And our j of q, q dot, is going to be d dot times v of alpha, alpha dot. Well, if we want to, again, pull out our d and our alpha dot, that also is going to be uh, a linear matrix, a 4 by 4, which we'll pause the video now so you get a chance to do that. Done. So what's times d dot? It's going to be the i matrix. We've got a 0 over here, so there's no alpha value. 
0 times our d dot, and then we've just got a b of alpha here. So you can see, well, this has sort of the same format here. But what is this d alpha dot? What we have before, this is our x dot, which is our um, j of alpha of q. Now, if you want to invert this matrix, go back the other way, uh, trivial to take the inverse of a diagonal matrix, look at i, and we got the inverse of this, the inverse of alpha, 0, 0. Now, the only problem is, this term here can have some singularities. Uh, and we have to figure out how to find those. Well, a uh, singularity, the Jacobian defines this mapping uh, between our velocity and a q dot. Singularities are when there is no inverse because our, our q dot is our joint velocities. This psi is the vector of possible in effective velocities, and not all ineffective velocities might be possible. All we can do is the ones that are the linear combinations of the columns of the Jacobian. And so if this is full rank, then we can reach anything. If we can't, then we are uh, in a singular place where there 